So thank you for asking me to uh, give a brief outline or brief history of the uh, electron ion collider project. There are many things that I collected as part of preparation, and then I had to reduce it. But anyway, I have a bigger version, longer version of this, which I uh, will now uh, keep. Uh, special thanks to these people from which I have picked uh, some slides which were early in the history, and I have not told them, but you will see and recognize those blocks. Um, and uh, the outline of the talk uh, is something that Richard gave in 2016, uh, uh, electron ion collider user group meeting at Argon, and uh, we thought that that would be the right thing to do is to pick that up and upgrade that to include some physics discussion <laughs> that led to the discuss that was motivated by the early times. So that's the general idea that we are going to present. Um, the uh, if you if you think there was something uh, glaringly missing, please let us know, and we will will definitely include that in the in the output. I think we want to get that out right. Okay, so the outline of the talk is really going by the timeline. I will talk about before or around 1995, uh, 96. Uh, uh, when I call before the beginning, it's really the beginning of the EIC as a project. Uh, I will talk about the 2002 uh, timelines where there were early ideas that developed in the US. Uh, eventually, uh, around 2007, uh, uh, the ideas uh, came together, a community started forming that uh, we did not still call it a user group community, it was just simply EIC collaboration or EIC uh, enthusiasts. Uh, and then finally, in the timeline of around 13 to 15, uh, the whole thing gelled together. Um, and as we know, we are now currently at the verge of uh, reality. Now, the blue uh, uh, numbers that I have mentioned here, you can probably identify them as the, time, uh, the years in which we had the long range plan. So those are the uh, timestamps that I will emphasize as, uh, as this uh, presentation goes on. So let me start with something with beginning, uh, that was before the beginning and mid 1990s. It was mainly a European idea uh, that the polarized electron proton electron nucleus collider was first discussed. It was motivated by the second generation of fixed target experiments at SLAC and CERN and later at DAISY, uh, and also the successful start of the first polarized DIS collider, that is Terra. So those were the starting points in which uh, polarized protons and nuclei were also discussed. The earliest workshop that we uh, could find and uh, were part of at that point was the polarized and nuclear, and nuclear being considered at Terra. Uh, and this is the uh, workshop that was led by uh, Gunnar uh, uh, Engelmann, uh, Albert de Rook, and uh, Robert Planner. Uh, it was the first exploratory meeting, and focus, of course, was uh, using Hera, what could we do? And that was uh, typically all the physics that was discussed was uh, of x uh, greater than, uh, less than uh, 0.05. Um, at the same time, there was an effort at GSI to see uh, how a proposal for a lower energy collider focused on the physics of greater than uh, 0.05 in X, how would that go? And Dietrich von Harak was at least, from my recollections of communication at that time, was the principal person communicating with us in terms of polarized protons as we were working on the final results from SMC and uh, working on the simulations for Compass. And that's the front page of that, and that really focused mainly on light ion polarization. Uh, I could not find a paper that was more about nuclei in that region, at least at that time. Uh, the kind of things that were, uh, that were motivating uh, the physics at that point, I found a presentation from 1995 from an internal SMC document where we had looked at the low X extrapolation uh, to calculate the first movement of the gluon uh, of the of the uh, G1 of the proton, and before uh, the next leading order perturbative QCD analyses became ready, around the time of 95 to 99, all the theory groups came up together. 
We used to do a, a simplistic regi type of extrapolation to calculate the first movement, and those were the ones that we were, we were using for any uh, uh, evaluations of the Ellis Jaffe sum rule or the Bertin sum rule. And this is where the first time we realized that perturbative QCD was telling us something completely different, uh, modulo all the uncertainties, but really you had to have data going all the way down to 10 to the minus 4 at least, is what we thought. And that's when uh, these ideas of going to a Hera kinematic evolved, at least from the spin point of view. I'm sure a similar plot exists for nuclei uh, that, uh, that was, was also of great importance to you. Um, this was resulted, resulted in the interest uh, of the HERA community as well, uh, encouraged by uh, Bjorn Wick and Robert Klanner, Alan Caldwell, and, uh, and Sir Scully at the time. Uh, Vernon Hughes' group, which I was part of, we joined Zeus collaboration, and Albert Duruk and uh, Thomas German uh, ran a workshop uh, on polarized protons at HERA, and these are the kind of discussions that led to it. There was accelerator expert Desmond Barber, Hofstarter, and Matthias Folk. And you can remember uh, at that time was also the development of BRIC as a polarized climate going on. So we had we used to have external advice from Maybai and, uh, and Thomas Roser uh, for, the, for the accelerator part of it. It was also the time the first ideas of polarimetry developed. They were developing in BRIC and then being transferred or discussions discussed for, for HERA and that future. Here is at the same time, I'm sorry this is not uh, very clear, this is Arnioro, B, uh, Bialas, uh, Vitek Krasny, uh, Terry Sloan, and Mark Strickman uh, were leading the activities for the nuclear beams at Terra in parallel with the spin program that I just described. And you can see these were uh, very natural extrapolations going into the low X region for ratios of nuclei, F2 structure functions, uh, to understand what happens to these uh, iconic plot or plot in, 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 in the extremely low X region. So that was how it was simplistically, uh, but importantly presented uh, with, with these kind of discussions. Uh, I have that paper and uh, I tried to see if I could put some plots from that paper as a, a descriptive one. And it's an astonishing paper, it has about 16 plots with vertical lines for error bars and just changing the X and Y scale. There is nothing else, so it was a real, real, so very simplistic plot made there. Um, I, it, it, I didn't feel it was, it was the right to even put that in, in, in that one. But I think the physics was clearly driven by the uh, uh, desire to low X, to go to low X. This is a letter that we, I remembered, and uh, fortunately Mark uh, had a copy of it, a uh, partial copy of it, uh, written to uh, Bjorn Wick by Bjorkin, Larry, and, and Al Mueller, um, uh, suggesting that uh, this, the nuclear uh, beings in Hera would be of great value, and they described in the, in the first paragraph, first few paragraph, in, the, in, in view of the early results from Hera, uh, what should nuclei do uh, uh, with, with, with beyond protons? And this was a, a great boost for the nuclear program, and uh, uh, at that time, it was not known that what the timeline for various things would be. So Vernon had approached Bjorkin, suggesting that uh, uh, polarized protons could also be there uh, in the, in the, in the Hera beam. And uh, he, he was very supportive of that. I couldn't find a letter that he wrote at that time. But uh, it, was, it was clearly uh, presented at that time as if it was going to be one against the other either protons or nuclei, and that had created a separation in the community at the time as, as, as I felt at that point. Um, and that I think I, it is overcome in the later part uh, in, the, in the history of this. So uh, coming to the end of the first uh, part, at DAISY we had strong physics motivation to go to low X and high Q squared with spin variables. They were developed in, during that time. HERA existed, polarized electrons existed, Accelerator physicists working on polarized protons, they were excited and working on it. Rick was coming online, almost ready to go. A nuclear beams with limited species could be accelerated. H1 and Zeus detector existed. And the Hermes polarized DIS community also existed at that time. Um, the only thing missing was polarized protons, and I thought, at least I remember thinking it was going to be happening. Um, 
Uh, the cost estimated at that time was about 30 million Weishmarks, principally for the Siberian snake magnets, uh, six magnets that they would have needed. Uh, the EPEA communities were, however, divided because we were told that they were only one of the two could be run before 2007. And I think uh, more importantly, the intellectual connections that we now present uh, in terms of making the science case for EIC, uh, those were very preliminary or did not exist. In any case, DAISY had some other things in mind, so they went in a different direction. And I think this is something that, uh, that uh, uh, brought uh, many of us uh, to a different continent. So uh, I think they were uh, immediately following that uh, decision or around the time that the signals were clear that that was not going to happen. There were three efforts that were started in the US, one at Indiana University Cyclotron Facility, one at MIT Bates, and uh, the third one was ERIC at that time, the development of the polarized. RIC was a uh, principal attractor, along with the fact that nuclear beams already were planned uh, in, in RIC. Uh, so here is a workshop that, was, that happened in, uh, at, at Indiana uh, around 1999. Uh, uh, that was also the time when DOE had suggested that the local research on these things should be centralized for some labs, so they were looking for alternatives as to what could be done at the local facilities. And Indiana, I was looking at building a small energy collider. Um, uh, and, and that was uh, led by Les Blanc, uh, Tim Londigan, and uh, 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 yeah. Um, the second attempt was the ERIC effort that we had started. Uh, it was, if I could remember, the first time I heard about ERIC was from George Idol. Even four, three, four years before uh, this, uh, this time, as we were working on the polarized hair effort, and of course, Albert Duruk was uh, clearly instrumental in that, in, in, in helping us uh, transfer everything that we had done for the polarized program into this. And that's the workshop that we had. Uh, Jerry Garvey, Peter Paul uh, were, were also of uh, uh, great support at that time. And Roser et al. were uh, already showing that polarization in RIC could exist. Um, Larry and Raju were at the same time uh, pushing for nuclei in the, uh, the, uh, the science development for nuclei in URIC, and they had the first workshop on that aspect uh, around uh, uh, the same time, around 2000, uh, at Brookhaven. Um, while this was not at the highest energies that everyone wanted to go to, go to the lowest X, it was the first time that the two communities of the polarized proton and the nuclei, uh, they came together. I think this was, this was, uh, this was a, a, a revealing thing. Uh, we could talk to each other. I think the physics discussion started coming in, not only from the accelerator detector side, but also on the physics side. I think that is something that uh, I have appreciated you know, moving from, coming from the polarized proton uh, into, into uh, handling or uh, thinking about nuclei. Uh, this was the third thing that happened around the same time. This was the MIT effort again. As MIT Bates' future was uncertain, Richard et al. at MIT were looking at possibilities, as, as were uh, the Indiana folks. Um, and uh, they planned a workshop uh, before ERIC ideas came up. Uh, and you can see that they described that here. Uh, but eventually, uh, they realized that this was a better uh, a chance of success if all these communities came together. Um, and that's what Richard wrote at that time, that the proponents of the electron ion collider, which was not named exactly like that, uh, just used the words, came together and agreed to make a scientific case for a machine. The MIT meeting originally planned was only for polarized uh, protons and light. Nuclei were also only polarized, were expanded to, to uh, include the heavy ion possibilities uh, uh, at the MIT, the new machine uh, called the electron ion collider, and the steering committee was formed. Uh, this was the place where we, Richard remembers, we first called it fully electron ion collider. At that point, uh, a long range plan was declared and we had to start preparing for it. And uh, we wrote that paper with Raju uh, and Werner Fogelsang uh, with uh, activities from Riken. I think this was all, uh, at that point at least, uh, run with Riken. Uh, an EWIC uh, activity, the symbol was created by the BNL Arts Department at that time. Um, the people who were highly supportive at that time, again, was 
uh, Larry and G.D. Lee, uh, Peter Paul and Jerry Garvey, who was on sabbatical at that time, spent a lot of time with us. And this was the uh, white paper for the 2002 Long Range Plan was created with, uh, for the first time, a set of universities which were, uh, 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 which was, which was significantly longer than we had initially imagined or initially uh, started with. So this was the first time this week we sort of brought the whole thing together. And it was really the long range planning activity that pushed us in that direction. Now, in the long range plan, the results were optimistic. Uh, there is a new accelerator concept, they said, it has been proposed to extend our understanding of the structure of matter in terms of parts and gluons. And two classes of machines were proposed, the Linac ring and the ring ring design at that time. And a, there was consensus among the nuclear scientists to pursue R&D over the next few years to see the real potential for science as well as machine going in that direction. Now, that's how ERIC looked or EIC looked at that time. There were these two designs, which I can give you a quiz. Are they ring ring or Linac ring? And I can tell you this one is another version. And this is called the New Jersey Linac, and this is the Connecticut Linac going in that direction. That's how it was presented at that time. And I think at that point, I witnessed the birth of the Jefferson Lab effort. And people can correct me at that time. In the pre-resolution meeting around 2001 and 2002, the two plans were presented, the ERIC as a collider, and JLab was presented as an upgrade of the 24 GB. And I think at that point, Shapan Chaudhary, uh, uh, mentioned to this uh, to the discussion uh, as to why don't we start thinking uh, to, to Leah Merminga why don't we start thinking about a collider and the next time uh, in this this discussion came up was Rolf and leading the effort with Leah and this was presented within about six months of that discussion on the long range plan to come up with a um, um, with a collider proposal. Uh, with, uh, with a novel greenfield design with a bow tie shape with 5 GeV electrons extracted and the collision points as shown here. Now you can see, recognize that that's, since then uh, the, the basic concept has not changed. Uh, it was then presented in 2003 for a, uh, a, uh, a NSAC subcommittee review and uh, uh, I will come back to that a little later. Uh, but this is where it start, I think it started and I think 2002 or uh, at the end of the long range plan, it was clear that this was going to be playing a major role. And I think from this time onwards, at least in the US context, here we can at that time call medium energy electron ion collider, what is called JELESE, is a single project. And I think the science has gone uh, together. So this was the science that we presented at that time, typically in the long range plan. We had a nucleon structure, polarized and unpolarized TP scattering. A role of quarks and gluons in nuclei, spin structures separated, correlations between partons with GPDs. For the first time, I think people were using, uh, uh, coming from the uh, uh, European TMD effort, GPD effort, this is the first time in any of the papers that, uh, uh, on the EIC side at least, uh, GPDs appear. Uh, nuclear structure, the hydronization, and the partonic matter in the extreme, uh, in the extreme condition. Uh, you can see that the, the words that we currently use, uh, imaging, etc., were not used. Color glass condensate was not emphasized that much. But the point is that still the basic concepts of what we now talk about the science of PIC, uh, the, those ideas already are there. The detector effort at that time was Vitek Krasny and, and Janusz uh, Stratowski. Uh, he had a, a normal detector, detector concept, which was a very long detector, this was a plus minus 10 meters with the central part, which is expanded here, and the hadron side and the, and the electron side, uh, a out of the box thinking as he used to always uh, emphasize, here is the other part of it, the longer part, the hadron side and the electron side. This kind of uh, things that they were, they were discussing at the time. But this was, I think, the last uh, effort at HERA, which was uh, really the Zeus, H1, and Hermes collaborators coming together to make a final push for polarized protons and nuclei. And you can see many, many um, uh, familiar names. Uh, in this, uh, Antje Brühl, who actually was very, uh, very active in that time in the EIC act activity as well. Uh, I tried to find some plots from her at that in this one, but I could not. And I think maybe that's something we should, we should, uh, should find. Uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised to see uh, Rick Yoshida 
at that time, you know, he's, uh, so I think this is something that, uh, the, that they tried uh, at that point. I don't know what the evaluation was, but eventually we all know that Terra stopped in 2007. This was a paper that we wrote uh, as summarizing the science case with Richard, Raju, and Werner really going at the, uh, the original plan was to go for a nucleon spin paper, but at that point, Vernon uh, sadly uh, died, and uh, we decided that in the, in the wake of the uh, white paper uh, of the long-range plan, we decided that that's the kind of thing that we would do uh, to write a paper on the EIC itself. And these are the kind of plots that exist in that paper, so that reflects the science of EIC as we knew it around that time. Loex uh, using uh, G1 proton, uh, semi-inclusive DIX, digit asymmetries, to get the gluon distribution, electroweak physics, A1 of a W minus, W plus, uh, nuclei ratios of F2s, what the status of parton distributions in nuclei was, uh, colored glass condensate appears, starts appearing around 2004, five, and diffractive physics was clearly identified as a way to conclusively get to the very, very low X. And uh, here is one another uh, novel detector idea presented by uh, Carl Will et al. Um, and here is up um, uh, a long detector, not so different than what VTEC had done, but with some differences uh, in the magnetic field direction. They were all uh, dipole magnets. Uh, it's a paper that uh, I think uh, was used for discussions of detector for a long time uh, after that. Uh, I don't know whether the directly the concepts of uh, that paper have been implemented or thought about independently even into our current uh, detector ideas. Well, then appeared the 2007 long range plan and I think that's uh, something that uh, uh, again helped us focus our minds to uh, to, to something uh, together. Here was the EIC white paper, if you remember the white front page. Uh, the list is much longer. Uh, it was presented as a EIC uh, effort both from Jefferson Lab and Brookhaven. Uh, two designs were presented, um, and the emphasis on the EA physics was, uh, was emphasized with a separate white paper. I don't think there was a polarized proton white paper, but this was a separate one with Thomas and uh, Raju uh, et al. From, uh, from Brookhaven that led to uh, explicitly emphasize the low X physics with nuclei. The result was a lot more positive. The electron ion collider with the polarized beams has been embraced by the nuclear uh, community as embodying the vision for reaching the next QCD frontier. It was, uh, for the first time, the NSAC as a whole supported that paper. It, would, it talked about uh, the, the, what it could do. Uh, it, would, it, would, it said it was a unique facility complementing all the efforts that were going on around the world. And they allocated for the first time uh, resources to develop the accelerator and detect the technology. Uh, to lay the foundations for polarized electron ion collider in the U.S., um, it, it clearly says about talks about the QCD frontier as being the strong color field uh, in nuclei and precisely image the gluons in proton. Um, a couple of years later, anticipating the fact that now the third long-range plan seriously and uh, encountered by the EIC in the U.S. was coming, uh, there was a long the INT program here led by Daniel Bohr, Marcus Deal, Richard, and uh, Raju and uh, Werner. And that was one of the key uh, uh, workshops in which there was a huge uh, uh, outpouring of, of exciting uh, excitement from users or potential users, um, theorists as well as experimentalists. And this uh, a, a document that uh, became the, the source of support uh, uh, for the rest of the EIC physics that has uh, happened and, or we promote uh, nowadays. That made a very strong case. Uh, at the same time, uh, they identified uh, three levels of uh, measurements. And I think they were called golden, silver, and bronze. And I think not everyone appreciated uh, that. I think people did not like it. And I can certainly understand why they don't like it. At the same time, it was appreciated, I can a sense from people outside that uh, they could appreciate the fact that we were uh, categorizing uh, measurements that were the most important ones, uh, less important in terms of making the case, not from the absolute sense of the physics measurement. 
And I think that was uh, a very important and I think under, understated lesson. It's not that the silver or the bronze measurements are less important, mm -hmm. but it is how we sell the case for the EIC. And I think the golden measurements that were identified uh, by the conveners, by the, by the, the, uh, the, the uh, people who were involved in that, I think does, did help us in the long run. This was the uh, NSAC subcommittee major uh, nuclear physics facilities uh, 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 evaluation I was mentioning about. The IC got a very high rating for science, absolutely central to the ability uh, to the contributing to world in science in the, in the, in the next uh, decade. And again, uh, the machine needed some work, both on the ERIC side as well as the JLAB side. I think uh, I mentioned that before. And that was one of the slides that I showed you before from Ralph and and uh, uh, That evolved into a white paper that was asked for by uh, uh, Bob and, and Steve Wigdor at that point uh, that resulted, as you know, in this uh, white paper with Jan Wei and Zanadine as uh, the co-coordinators with me. Uh, in the long range plan that to, to be presented, the science of it, uh, the hot and the cold QCD working group unanimously declared EIC to be the most desired future facility for the US in nuclear science. That was in September uh, 14. These are the components of the science case as we learned now. Uh, uh, the, the pictures, uh, the, the description of the science has emerged into a more sophisticated one, the science deep in it is of correlations, understanding GPDs, TMDs, and the spin of the proton, emergent phenomena uh, coming out of these interactions. Uh, in the, uh, what happens in nuclear medium, how does hadronic uh, uh, color neutral phase, uh, state form, and uh, what does the nuclear medium do to pattern distributions? And finally, what is the uh, nature of the high gluon density uh, matter in nuclei? That presentation was successful, uh, and in the long range plan of 2015, we got the highest recommendation, uh, saying they recommend the high energy, high luminosity, polarized electron ion collider uh, as the highest priority new facility construction uh, for the completion, after the completion of FRIP. And uh, for the first time, it would precisely image the gluons in protons and nuclei, and definitely reveal the, the origin of the nucleon spin also uh, talks about the uh, ultra high gluon density field. So I think this was a great success. This was the place where uh, uh, the, the DOE also took notice and started moving towards the next step for this. Um, the vision that was envisioned in the long range plan was that the CBAP and the RIC uh, would merge into a single community and work at this unique facility. Uh, and it would keep the nuclear and the accelerator science at the edge. Uh, these are the components that you've already start seeing here, uh, which then become, now we know, uh, are also the components of the NSA, the National Academy uh, report. So here is what the options are. I will not go too many into details, just these are the things that we presented to National Academy, to the NSAC. Those are the ones that we presented to the, to the, to the, uh, to the National Academy. Uh, and these are the two designs that we currently think are the ones that uh, could realize that dream of science. Uh, there are currently four concepts which are around. That doesn't mean that more could not come or these could not evolve into something. Here is the concept of the day one detector using the Bavar solenoid at Brookhaven. This is the beast detector at Brookhaven. Here is the JLab detector concept starting with the Clio magnet. And this is the last kit on the block recently from Argonne National Lab using silicon uh, detectors uh, and besides calorimetry, uh, taken ideas from and development from the high energy. As you all know, uh, some, some of you might also be the recipient of a detector R&D program managed uh, by BNL for DOE, Thomas Ulrich runs that, uh, at the level of about $1 million per year. And our hope is that this will uh, grow without taking money out of the, uh, of the operating funds of the two labs. So something like three, three million over the next couple of uh, a few years. I think the users uh, getting involved in the collaboration forming will, will need that. And I think this is something that we need to uh, focus on. At the same time, we have a user group, as you all know. Uh, there are about 826 uh, uh, collaborators from 30 countries, uh, 176 institutions, 
spread all over the world. This is not surprising in my opinion. All of these were involved in various nuclear physics activities, not just in the US, but also in the Europe. And I think they came to the same uh, open questions which are compelling uh, uh, in, in QCD. And I think this is something that has driven the wider attraction for EIC. And we now have a structure in mind, uh, in place. You have a steering committee, an institutional board, and recently we formed the, the speakers uh, bureau or committee, which to coordinate the talks amongst the various uh, uh, proponents as well as uh, users. The task force uh, are, in, uh, are, in uh, are in place. Activities in starting on the beam polarimetry activity, uh, uh, investigations, luminosity measurement, background studies, as well as the IR design. And the next uh, meeting that we are planning in, in Paris. Uh, <clears throat> the science of this white paper that we produced as a community was presented, as I mentioned, to the Long Range, uh, to the National Academy uh, plan. And I think the recommendation was glowing. Uh, EIC science is compelling, timely, and fundamental. And this was developed by the National Academy Committee. Some of them are, the members are here, uh, and some of them might be on the, on the, on the, uh, on the phone. Or, uh, but I think it is important to see that that committee was broader than just the proponents, which was the QCD, high energy QCD community. And I think this is something that uh, you should look at it as a way to guide our way forward as to how the outside community looks at our machine, our ideas. And that's something that we should uh, keep in mind. Here's the science that was presented uh, and that came out of this report. Again, uh, luminosity, center of mass energy, this is the plot that we presented to them. The nucleon spin, the PMDs, and the evolution of them, the GPDs are the gluon distribution and its evolution, initial stage, and uh, partons flowing through nuclei, and the physics that we can do with it. Here is a summary of National Academy report. It says that EIC must enable the following, and these are the ranges of that dimension for the center of mass energy, the neutron to the heaviest plot, uh, 100 to 1,000 times higher luminosity, and a minimum 70% polarization. These are endorsements of the proposals that we made through the long range plan, through the white paper. I think this is a, a remarkable thing. For if you talk to the uh, or the, the members of the White uh, the National Academy uh, paper uh, uh, review now, I think uh, I could have imagined uh, at some point the discussion might have gone with the people from outside to a different parameterization. Uh, I think this is something remarkable, in my opinion, at least that they have, they endorsed all the things that we proposed. Uh, talking to other people outside of our field is really important, and this was started already um, it, around the long range plan. Uh, Rolf and uh, Thomas and uh, Raju wrote this article in uh, Scientific American 2015 that came out just around the long range plan. I think it was very useful to have such a public, uh, such a uh, broadly circulated and uh, uh, article for people to appreciate that there's this interest not just from us, but there's a broader interest. That article was uh, published and uh, translated in at least four different languages, maybe more. Is that you're counting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, but I think this is this was this was a, a great thing that happened for us. And and uh, more recently, Elke and uh, uh, Rolf have written this article uh, in the Sun Courier about the nuclei and the. Even the head, uh, the front page of the Sun Courier now looks like the gluon uh, that we are looking after. I think these are, these are important things that we should continue to do uh, in, the, in the near future. Well, here's my end of my history, and I hope that the future begins. Uh, you have to remember that uh, the ideas, uh, early ideas at least, for the going to higher energy, to enable low X extra physics, uh, came from experimental input uh, in Europe, uh, theoretical ideas course evolved around the world. Uh, they have flourished in the US with the investment of the world scientists world around. Uh, narrowly focused machines on EH or E hadron uh, have failed in the past. Uh, I think our UIC EIC is different. It has all the components that make the compelling case to understand QCD and not just one aspect of QCD. Uh, like, you know, like the spin or just the low X or just the nuclear pattern distribution function. I think we have to appreciate that QCD is bigger than all that and it's all fit that understanding of all of that 
really makes the case. And this is, I think, the reason why we, our EIC is making uh, a, a, you know, our meaning our, I'm not talking about US EIC anymore, but our EIC. Uh, I think it makes sense. Of course, it poses accelerated challenges, but that you have seen is a research and exciting opportunity and a challenge for young accelerator scientists to move in that direction. The IR and the detector designs are challenging and innovative that pushes ideas beyond what we have seen. So all of this is very good for a project that is coming up in the next uh, uh, decade. Theory, experimental ideas, and accelerator all go together, and hopefully they will all, uh, we will all reap that harvest. And I think this is the idea that the proponents of this workshop here at INT have, have gone forward with, is that we need to explore new ideas for physics and deepen the existing ones uh, to make full use of the facility that we have. Thank you very much. You, you have there a slide uh, when you had 2001. So uh, if you can go back to that slide. 2001. There was a, a, a the stage when it was 2001 and you, you pointed out that there, there was something about GPDs on the slide. Yeah. And you, you pointed out, uh, you said like GPDs and TMDs. So mm -hmm. that, uh, it's the fact that uh, uh, combination uh, of GPDs and TMDs. Uh, this one here? Yeah. There, yeah. there was no TMDs and for a while it may start to appear around 2005. Right. So it's too bad to be on the uh, okay. history Thank side you. that the TMD business was, uh, was not well, there. Certainly depends on what you mean. It was sort of formalized about that time. The people thought about well, that independent distribution of the what all time. Yeah. They, they uh, I mean, even, even the abbreviation TMD wasn't there. No, it might be called something else, but no, 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 it, was, uh, it, it, took, it took, uh, it took like four or five five years to, to push it into into the EIC program because uh, it was kind of not considered as a something relevant at that time. Mm -hmm. We were measuring the TMD in 2002, so where they were not inserted in the program, but uh, already. Yeah, so yeah, don't that, go, that, don't that, that 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 that, In fact, that was was on on top of the on Just the TMD measurements. Hermes okay. had the first paper. Hermes okay. had the first paper and Hermes people were in the, in the EIC. In the, no, no, I'm not. Remember, this is not about this is not about TMD. This is about when the discussion came into EIC. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, yeah, no, I could not find TMD, anything TMD, for that. TMD, to me, is a is a good example that it was coming very hard into EIC, uh -huh. and when we when we try to. Uh, bring something new and, 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 and there is obvious resistance because there is a lot of other stuff and this something new is very hard to, to bring in because there is like canonic stuff and, and uh, my point was that at that time TMDs were not at all canonic and it, in fact it was a big effort to, to, to bring them in. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Actually we have started already discussing the document that will come out of this program. So as the editor of the white paper that came after the document from the INT program 2010 was published, um, was anything missing from 2010 paper, uh, this Humanus document? Uh, do you have any wish list for the potential future white paper editors? I have not thought about it, I didn't really think about it, but you're, you're asking me. So you had the you had, you, had, you, had, you, had, you had the document that came out of the INT program in 2010. Yes. As the basis of the white paper that was written in 2012. Yes. So how helpful that document was, and so was there anything missing there that, as a as an editor, you would wish you had for the next one? I was not the editor for the first one. Oh, cool. the, the the you know. Raju was there, I think he yeah. could probably comment. And so the way we looked at it was that as they gave us the golden measurement in this and presented, and these are the things that we discussed as to what will make the case for EIC is the question that we may ask at that point. Not whether I like that physics or is it more important than that. That was not how it was. Because if there was any other facility around the world who could do this thing, then the case for making the case for that particular physics for the EIC becomes weak. So that was weighted low. 
somebody else could do it much earlier or in the same time. So you had to identify topics which were important from the physics point of view, but still to be done uniquely by, the, uh, by, by, by something in the EIC. If you could identify those things, they became important in the EIC, the white paper that we wrote. So we were not in the business of evaluating the physics. We were, we were asked to explicitly identify topics that would make the case. And uh, you can comment if you want. Uh, uh, Geraldine, you're there. Uh, so I think that's how we look at it at that point. Well, I think at some level that's just a status report. We were just arguing about the legal task. It's very questionable that at that time people already had the papers in hand for dihedrals and dihedrals to legal transfers. On the other hand, the whole TMD framework mm -hmm. was just in the beginning. I think you should see the 2010 program somewhere. People did the best job, that was true community efforts. Mm -hmm. If you now compare to uh, 2010, I probably can directly point to four or five things we probably should put in as community in a new community paper. This is just natural. Uh, people are working on things, developing needs to be making new links. But I think the program was very useful yep. uh, for the white paper. And this is the time, just the same as we look back now to the 2000, how little America looks to go back and all the things related to, I don't know. Or a relation of correlation small a substructure projects, uh, final chaos structure, mass, I mean, whatever. Isn't that but and where they, 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 were, huh? they were, they, these are ideas that have come, many of them have come since then. That's correct. Yeah. So, so, that's, so that's the one that. So so we're collecting it again. Yeah, exactly. We started a lot of activities at CIP, and I think it was crucial to initiate all these activities. Sure. And then they were followed up actually until we were writing the white paper to uh, kind of finalize them, to make them nicer and all of this. So yeah. I think the IMT was really crucial to initiate a lot of uh, the work which has led to the white paper yeah. at that time. So it was really important that we had some. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so one thing that um, really was, to me at least, new that came out of the Program the connections between the spin of small x mm -hmm. and And that came via the understanding that some of the language that we use for unintegrated part institutions, the dependent part institutions, and that had been in the small x community for a long time, were very strongly tied to some of the key language. And that led to a number of early advanced papers subsequently kind of convergence. Right. These two communities. So to me, um, that was one of the right. big outcomes. And, 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 and I remember Bob Jaffe was here the last week of that program, and he actually also made a point and noted that sort of synergy. Mm -hmm. And I think but the, the connection between TMDs and Lloyds was in our white paper. Yes. I mean, so they started and, with and the was subsequent, right? That yeah, was yeah, exactly. No, yeah, exactly. That was included in that. I mean, that that was clearly, the, and that was the the motivation for the early comment I made that they, we we were disconnected groups and we were not talking to each other, and that really what happened here. Uh, I think also the last time initiated very successful successful collaboration between theorists and experimentalists to really kind of uh, yeah. do some of the important impact studies for the PIC and. <coughs> how the people outside of our community look at that. In fact, the 7.1 figure in your in, in the National Academy paper, which replaces the, 
the blog of the DPD TMD with mass. Now, that's a very revealing. Uh, I, I felt that that was a revealing way to see how you were thinking in the discussion. I think that's that's how I interpret it. Because what we call these interactions that come correlations that come from TMD, how can they be interpreted outside? So, yes. Sure. 